The Sama Baju refers to several Austronesian ethnic groups of maritime Southeast Asia with their origins from the southern Philippines. The name collectively refers to related people who usually call themselves the Sama or Sama, or are known by the exonyms Baju, also spelled Bajau, Baja, Bajau, Baja, Bajo or Bayo, and Samal or Sayamal, the latter being considered offensive. They usually live a seaborne lifestyle, and use small wooden sailing vessels such as the Prahu, Liag in Maranao, Jenjing, Balutu, Lepa, Piling, and Vinta, or Lepa Lepa. Some Sama Baju groups native to Sabah are also known for their traditional horse culture. The Sama Baju are traditionally from the many islands of the Sulu archipelago in the Philippines, coastal areas of Mindanao, northern and eastern Borneo, the Celebes, and throughout eastern Indonesian islands. In the Philippines, they are grouped together with a religiously similar Moro people. Within the last 50 years, many of the Filipino Sama Baju have migrated to neighboring Malaysia and the northern islands of the Philippines, due to the conflict in Mindanao. As of 2010, they were the second largest ethnic group in the Malaysian state of Sabah. Sama Baju have sometimes been called the Sea Gypsies or Sea Nomads, terms that have also been used for non related ethnic groups with similar traditional lifestyles, such as the Mokan of the Burmese Thai Mergi Archipelago and the Orang Laut of southeastern Sumatra and the Riau Islands of Indonesia. The modern outward spread of the Sama Baju from older inhabited areas seems to have been associated with the development of sea trade in sea cucumber, Trepang. Ethnonym Like the term Kadazan Dusan, Sama Baju is a collective term, used to describe several closely related indigenous people who consider themselves a single distinct bangsa, ethnic group, or nation. It is generally accepted that these groups of people can be termed Sama or Baju, though they never call themselves Baju in the Philippines. Instead, they call themselves with the names of their tribes, usually the place they live or place of origin. For example, the sea-going Sama Baju prefer to call themselves the Sama Dilot or Sama Mandalot, literally, Sea Sama or Ocean Sama in the Philippines, while in Malaysia, they identify as Baju Laut. Historically in the Philippines, the term Sama was used to describe the more land-oriented and settled Sama Baju groups, while Baju was used to describe the more sea-oriented, boat-dwelling, nomadic groups. Even these distinctions are fading as the majority of Sama Baju have long since abandoned boat living, most for Sama-style piling houses in the coastal shallows. Sama is believed to have originated from the Austronesian root word Sama meaning together, same, or kin. The exact origin of the exonym Baju is unclear. Some authors have proposed that it is derived from a corruption of the Malay word burjau, getting further apart, or the state of being away. Other possible origins include the Brunei Malay word bahal, which means to fish. The term baju has pejorative connotations in the Philippines, indicating poverty in comparison to the term sama especially since it is used most commonly to refer to poverty-stricken Sama Baju who make a living through begging. British administrators in Sabah classified the Sama Baju as Baju and labeled them as such in their birth certificates. Thus the Sama Baju in Malaysia may sometimes self-identify as Baju or even Malay, though the preferred term is Sama. For political reasons, this is due to the government recognition of the Sama Baju as legally Bumiputera indigenous native under the name Baju. This ensures easy access to the special privileges granted to ethnic Malays. This is especially true for recent Moro Filipino migrants. The indigenous Sama Baju in Malaysia have also started labeling themselves as their ancestors called themselves, such as Simonal. History and origin for most of their history, the Sama Baju have been a nomadic, seafaring people, living off the sea by trading and subsistence fishing. The boat-dwelling Sama Baju see themselves as non-aggressive people. They kept close to the shore by erecting houses on stilts, and traveled using lepa, handmade boats which many lived in. Oral traditions 
Most of the various oral traditions and Tarsila royal genealogies among the Sama Baju have a common theme which claims that they were originally a land-dwelling people who were the subjects of a king who had a daughter. After she is lost by either being swept away to the sea, by a storm or a flood, or being taken captive by a neighboring kingdom, they were then supposedly ordered to find her. After failing to do so they decided to remain nomadic for fear of facing the wrath of the king. One such version widely told among the Sama Baju of Borneo claims that they descended from Johorian royal guards who were escorting a princess named Diang Aisha for marriage to a ruler in Sulu. However, the Sultan of Brunei, allegedly Muhammad Shah of Brunei, also fell in love with the princess. On the way to Sulu, they were attacked by Bruneians in the high seas. The princess was taken captive and married to the Sultan of Brunei instead. The escorts, having lost the princess, elected to settle in Borneo and Sulu rather than return to Johor. Among the Indonesian Sama Baju, on the other hand, their oral histories place more importance on the relationship of the Sama Baju with the Sultanate of Gawa rather than Johor. The various versions of their origin myth tell about a royal princess who was washed away by a flood. She was found and eventually married a king or a prince of Gawa. Their offspring then allegedly became the ancestors of the Indonesian Sama Baju. However, there are other versions which are also more mythological and do not mention a princess. Among the Philippine Sama Baju, for example, there is a myth that claims that the Sama Baju were accidentally towed into what is now Zamboanga by a giant stingray. Incidentally, the native pre-Hispanic name of Zamboanga City is Samboangan, literally, mooring place, which was derived from the Sanama word for a mooring pole, Sambuang or Samboang. Modern research on origins the origin myths claiming descent from Johor or Gawa have been largely rejected by modern scholars, mostly because these kingdoms were established too recently to explain the ethnic divergence. Though whether the Sama Baju are indigenous to their current territories or settled from elsewhere is still contentious. Linguistically, they are distinct from neighboring populations, especially from the Taosug who are more closely related to the northern Philippine ethnic groups like the Visayans. In 1965, the anthropologist David E. Soffer claimed that the Sama Baju, along with the Orang Laut, descended from ancient Bedoid Australoid hunter-gatherers from the Riau archipelago who intermarried with Austronesians. They retained their hunter-gatherer lifestyle, though they became more maritime-oriented as Southeast Asia became more populated by later Austronesian settlers like the Malays. In 1968, the anthropologist Harry Arlo Nimmo, on the other hand, believed that the Sama Baju are indigenous to the Sulu archipelago, Sulawesi, and or Borneo, and do not share a common origin with the Orang Laut. Nimmo proposed that the boat-dwelling lifestyle developed among the ancestors of the Sama Baju independently from the Orang Laut. A more recent study in 1985 by the anthropologist Alfred Kemp Palaisen compares the oral traditions with historical facts and linguistic evidence. He puts the date of the ethnogenesis of Sama Baju as 800 AD and also rejects a historical connection between the Sama Baju and the Orang Laut. He hypothesizes that the Sama Baju originated from a proto Sama Baju people inhabiting the Zamboanga Peninsula who practiced both fishing and slash and burn agriculture. They were the original inhabitants of Zamboanga and the Sulu archipelago, and were well established in the region long before the first arrival of the Taosug people at around the 13th century from their homelands along the northern coast of eastern Mindanao. Along with the Taosug, they were heavily influenced by the Malay kingdoms both culturally and linguistically, becoming Indianized by the 15th century and Islamist by the 16th century. They also engaged in extensive trade with China for luxury. Sea products like trepang, pearls, and shark fin, from Zamboanga, some members of this people adopted an exclusively seaborne culture and spread outwards in the 10th century towards Basilan, Sulu, Borneo, and Sulawesi. They arrived in Borneo in the 11th century. This hypothesis is currently the most widely accepted among specialists studying the Austronesian peoples. This would also explain why even boat-dwelling Sama Baju still practice agricultural rituals, despite being exclusively fishermen. Linguistic evidence further points to Borneo as the ultimate origin of the proto-Sama Baju people. A genetic study of three groups, the Darawan of northeast Borneo, the Kotaburu of southeast Borneo and the Kendari of southeast Sulawesi, suggested that their origin was in southern Sulawesi. 
Each group had its own unique genetic contribution from neighboring populations. These genetic findings are consistent with the oral history. Historical records The epic poem Durangan of the Maranao people record that among the ancestors of the hero Bantugan is a Maranao prince who married a Sama Baju princess. Estimated to have happened in 840 AD, it is the oldest account of the Sama Baju. It further corroborates the fact that they predate the arrival of the Taosug settlers and are indigenous to the Sulu archipelago and parts of Mindanao. Sama Baju were first recorded by European explorers in 1521 by Antonio Pigafetta of the Magellan Elcano expedition in what is now the Zamboanga Peninsula. Pigafetta writes that the people of that island make their dwellings in boats and do not live otherwise. They have also been present in the written records of other Europeans henceforth, including in Sulawesi by the Dutch colonies in 1675, in Sulawesi and eastern Borneo by Thomas Forrest in the 1770s, and in the west coast of Borneo by Spencer St. John in the 1850s and 1860s. Sama Baju were often widely mentioned in connection to sea raids, manga hat, piracy and the slave trade in Southeast Asia during the European colonial period, indicating that at least some Sama Baju groups from northern Sulu, e.g. the Bangwangui, were involved, along with non-Sama Baju groups like the Iranan. The scope of their pirate activities was extensive, commonly sailing from Sulu to as far as Moluccas and back again. Aside from early European colonial records, they may have also been the pirates described by Chinese and Arab sources in the Straits of Singapore in the 12th and 13th centuries. Sama Baju usually served as low-ranking crew members of warboats, directly under the command of Iranan squadron leaders, who in turn answered to the Taosug Datu of the Sultanate of Sulu. The Bajo Harbor in Sulawesi was the site of a small settlement of Sama Baju under the Bugis Sultanate of Bone. They were significantly involved in First and Second Bone Wars 1824-1825, when the Royal Netherlands East Indies Army sent a punitive expedition in retaliation for Bugis and Makassar attacks on local Dutch garrisons. After the fall of Bone, most Sama Baju resettled in other areas of Sulawesi. During the British colonial rule of Sabah, the Sama Baju were involved in two uprisings against the North Borneo Chartered Company, the Mat Salah Rebellion from 1894 to 1905, and the Pandasan Affair of 1915. Modern Sama Baju Modern Sama Baju are generally regarded as peaceful, hospitable, and cheerful people, despite their humble circumstances. However, a significant number are also illiterate, uneducated, and impoverished, due to their nomadic lifestyle. The number of modern Sama Baju who are born and live primarily at sea is diminishing. Cultural assimilation and modernization are regarded as the main causes. Particularly after the dissolution of the Sultanate of Sulu, who were the traditional patrons of the Sama Baju for bartering fish for farm goods. The money-based fish markets which replaced the seasonal trade around mooring points necessitates a more land-based lifestyle for greater market penetration. In Malaysia, some hotly debated government programs have also resettled Baju to the mainland. The Sama Baju in the Sulu archipelago were historically discriminated against by the dominant Taosug people, who viewed boat dwelling Sama Baju as inferior, and as outsiders, the traditional Taosug term for them is the highly offensive Luwan, meaning spat out or outcast. They were also marginalized by other Moro peoples because they still practiced animist folk religions either exclusively or alongside Islam, and thus were viewed as uncivilized pagans. Boat dwelling and shoreline Sama Baju had a very low status in the caste-based Taosug Sultanate of Sulu. This survived into the modern Philippines where the Sama Baju are still subjected to strong cultural prejudice from the Taosug. The Sama Baju have also been frequent victims of theft, extortion, kidnapping, and violence from the predominantly Taosug Abu Sayyaf insurgents as well as pirates. This discrimination and the continuing violence in Muslim Mindanao have driven many Sama Baju to emigrate. They usually resettle in Malaysia and Indonesia, where they have more employment opportunities. But even in Malaysia their presence is still controversial as most of them are illegal immigrants. Most illegal Sama Baju immigrants enter Malaysia through offshore islands. From there, they enter mainland Sabah to find work as manual laborers. 
Others migrate to the northern islands of the Philippines, particularly to the Visayas, Palawan, the northern coast of Mindanao, and even as far as southern Luzon. Though these are relatively safer regions, they are also more economically disadvantaged and socially excluded, leading to Filipinos sometimes stereotyping the boat dwelling Sama Baju as beggars and squatters. The ancestral roaming and fishing grounds of the Sama Baju straddled the borders of the Philippines, Malaysia, and Indonesia. And they have sometimes voyaged as far as the Timor and Arafura Seas. In modern times, they have lost access to most of these sites. There have been efforts to grant Sama Baju some measures of rights to fish in traditional areas, but most Sama Baju still suffer from legal persecution. For example, under a 1974 Memorandum of Understanding, Indonesian traditional fishermen are allowed to fish within the exclusive economic zone of Australia, which includes traditional fishing grounds of Sama Baju fishermen. However, illegal fishing encroachment of corporate sea trawlers in these areas has led to concern about overfishing, and the destruction of Sama Baju vessels. In 2014, Indonesian authorities destroyed six Filipino Sama Baju boats caught fishing in Indonesian waters. This is particularly serious for the Sama Baju, whose boats are also oftentimes their homes. Sama Baju fishermen are often associated with illegal and destructive practices, like blast fishing, cyanide fishing, coral mining, and cutting down mangrove trees. It is believed that the Sama Baju resort to these activities mainly due to sedentarization brought about by the restrictions imposed on their nomadic culture by modern nation states. With their now limited territories, they have little alternative means of competing with better equipped land-based and commercial fishermen, and earn enough to feed their families. The Indonesian government and certain non-governmental organizations, have launched several programs for providing alternative sustainable livelihood projects for Sama Baju to discourage these practices, such as the use of fish aggregating devices instead of explosives. Medical health centers and schools have also been built even for stilt house Sama Baju communities. Similar programs have also been implemented in the Philippines. With the loss of their traditional fishing grounds, some refugee groups of Sama Baju in the Philippines are forced to resort to begging Agpangamu in Sanama, particularly diving for coins thrown by inter-island ferry passengers Anjjo. Other traditional sources of income include selling grated cassava, maglis, mat weaving, ag tepa, and jewelry making, especially from pearls. Recently, there have been more efforts by local governments in the Philippines to rehabilitate Sama Baju refugees and teach them livelihood skills. In 2016, the Philippine Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources started a project for distributing fishing boats, gear, and other livelihood materials among Sama Baju communities in Luzon. This was largely the result of raised awareness and an outpouring of support after a photo of a Sama Baju beggar, Rita Gaviola, dubbed the Bajau Girl, went viral in the Philippines. Subgroups The Sama Baju are fragmented into highly diverse subgroups. They have never been politically united and are usually subject to the land-based political groups of the areas they settle, such as the Sultanate of Brunei and the former Sultanate of Sulu. Most subgroups of Sama Baju name themselves after the place they originated from, usually an island. Each subgroup speaks a distinct language or dialect that are usually mutually intelligible with their immediate neighboring subgroup in a continuous linguistic chain. In the Philippines, the Sama Baju can be divided into three general groups based on where they settle. Sama Bayang or Sama Lipid, the shoreline Sama, or literal Sama. These are the Sama Baju which traditionally lived in stilt houses in shallows and coastal areas. An example is the Sama Simonal. They are originally from the larger islands of Tawi Tawi. They have a more flexible lifestyle than the Sama Gimba Dilot origin, and will farm when there is available land. They usually act as middlemen in trade between the Sama Dilot and other land-based peoples. Sama Dia, Sama Deya, or Sama Dirat, the land Sama. These are the Sama Baju which traditionally lived in island interiors. Some examples are the Sama Sabutu and the Sama Sangha Sangha. They are usually farmers who cultivate rice, sweet potato, cassava, and coconuts for copra through traditional slash and burn agriculture, in contrast to the plow agriculture technology brought by the Tausug. They are originally from the larger islands of Tawi Tawi and Pangataran. 
In the Philippines, the Sama Dia will often completely differentiate themselves from the Sama Dialot. Sama Dialot, Sama Mandalot, Sama Pala. U, or Baju Laut, the Sea Sama, or Ocean Sama. In the Philippines, the preferred ethnonym is Sama Dialot, while in Malaysia, they usually identify as Baju Laut. This subgroup originally lived exclusively on elaborately crafted houseboats called lepa, but almost all have taken to living on land in the Philippines. Their home islands include Sitangkai and Bongao. They are the Sama Baju subgroup most commonly called Baju, though Filipino Sama Dilot consider it offensive. They sometimes call themselves the Sama Tu. Ongan. Literally. True Sama. Or real Sama. To distinguish themselves from the land-dwelling Sama Baju subgroups, other minor Sama Baju groups named after islands of origin include the Sama Banaran, Sama Davao, Sama Zamboanga Sikabung, Sama Tuaran, Sama Semporna, Sama Sulawesi, Sama Simonal, Sama Tabawan, Sama Tandubas, or Sama Tanda ba, and Sama Ungus Matata. Mixed heritage Sama Baju and Taosug communities are sometimes known as Baju Sulak in Malaysia. People of multiple ethnic parentage may further identify with a three part self description, such as Baju Sulak Dusan. The following are the major subgroups usually recognized as distinct Baho, Indonesia, also known as Same or simply Sama by the Bugis, and Turijin, or Torijin, literally, people of the water, Bayo, or Bayo, by the Makassar. They are Sama Baju groups who settled in Sulawesi and Kalimantan, Indonesia through the Makassar Strait from as early as the 16th century. They have spread further into nearby islands, including the Lesser Sunda Islands, Maluku Islands, and Raja Ampat Islands. Bangwangui, Philippines, Malaysia, also known as Sama Balangangi, Sama Balangwangui, or Sama Bangangi, native to the Philippines. Some have recently migrated to Sabah. They are sometimes considered distinct from other Sama Baju. They have a more martial oriented society, and were once part of regular sea raids and piracy against coastal communities and passing ships. Main article Bangwangui people. East Coast Baju Philippines, Malaysia, or Sama Dilot who settled in the eastern coast of Sabah, particularly around Semporna. They still identify themselves as Baju Laut or Sama Laut, though they are called East Coast Baju to distinguish them from the Sama Kota Belat of western Sabah. They are also known by the exonym, Palayu, boat dwelling, in Sanama, but it is sometimes considered derogatory. Some have retained their original boat-dwelling lifestyle, but many others have built homes on land. They are known for the colorful annual Regatta Lepa Festival, which occurs from 24 to 26 April. Jama Mapun, Philippines, also known as Sama Kajian. They are from the island of Mapun, Tawi-Tawi, formerly known as Cagayan de Sulu. Their culture is heavily influenced by the Sulu Sultanate. Samal, Philippines, Malaysia. Samal, also spelled Siamal or Siamal, is a Taosug and Cebuano term and is sometimes considered offensive. Their preferred endonym is simply Sama, and they are more accurately a general subgroup of Sama Dia. Land Sama, native to the Philippines, a large number are now residing around the coasts of northern Sabah, though many have also migrated north to the Visayas and southern Luzon. They are predominantly land-dwelling. They are the largest single group of Sama Baju. In Davao del Norte, the island garden city of Samal was possibly named after them. Ubian Philippines, Malaysia, originated from the island of South Ubian in Tawi-Tawi, Philippines and make up the largest Sama Baju subgroup in Sabah. They reside in sizable minorities living around the towns of Kudit and Semporna in Sabah, Malaysia. West Coast Baju, Malaysia, also known as Sama Kota Belad, native to the western coast of Sabah, particularly around Kota Belad. They prefer to call themselves by the general ethnonym, Sama, not Baju, and their neighbors, the Dusans also call them Sama. 
British administrators originally defined them as Baju. They are referred to as West Coast Baju in Malaysia to distinguish them from the Sama dialect of Eastern Sabah and the Sulu Archipelago. They are known for having a traditional horse culture. Yakin Philippines found in the traditional Sama Baju homelands of Zamboanga and surrounding islands, including Basilan. Though they may have been the ancestors of the Sama Baju, they have become linguistically and culturally distinct and are usually regarded as a separate ethnic group. They are exclusively land-based and are usually farmers. Main article, Yakin people. Languages the Sama Baju peoples speak some ten languages of the Sama Baju subgroup of the Western Malayo Polynesian language family. Sanama is the most common name for these languages, but they are also called Baju, especially in Malaysia. Most Sama Baju can speak multiple languages. The Sama Baju languages were once classified under the Central Philippine languages of the Malayo Polynesian geographic group of the Austronesian language family. But due to marked differences with neighboring languages, they were moved to a separate branch altogether from all other Philippine languages. For example, Sanama pronunciation is quite distinct from other nearby Central Philippine languages like Tausug and Tagalog. Instead of the primary stress being usually on the final syllable, the primary stress occurs on the second to the last syllable of the word in Sanama. This placement of the primary stress is similar to Manobo and other languages of the predominantly animistic ethnic groups of Mindanao, the Lumad peoples. In 2006, the linguist Robert Blust proposed that the Sama Baja languages derived from the Burrito lexical region, though not from any established group. It is thus a sister group to other Burrito languages like Dayak and Malagasy. It is classified under the Bornean geographic group. Sama Baju languages are usually written in the Jawi alphabet. Culture Religion Religion can vary among the Sama Baju subgroups, from a strict adherence to Sunni Islam, forms of folk Islam, itself influenced by Sufi traditions of early Muslim missionaries, to animistic beliefs in spirits and ancestor worship. There is a small minority of Catholics and Protestants, particularly from Davao del Sur in the Philippines, among the modern coastal Sama Baju of Malaysia, claims to religious piety and learning are an important source of individual prestige. Some of the Sama Baju lack mosques and must rely on the shore-based communities such as those of the more Islamist or Malay peoples. Some of the more nomadic Sama Baju, like the Ubian Baju, are much less adherent to Orthodox Islam. They practice a syncretic form of folk Islam, revering local sea spirits, known in Islamic terminology as jinn. The ancient Sama Baju were animistic, and this is retained wholly or partially in some Sama Baju groups. The supreme deities in Sama Baju mythology are Umbo Tuan, also known as Umbo Dilat, the Lord of the Sea, and his consort Diang Diang Mangalai, Lady of the Forest. Umbo Tuan is regarded as the creator deity who made humans equal with animals and plants. Like other animistic religions, they fundamentally divide the world into the physical and spiritual realms which coexist. In modern Muslim Sama Baju, Umbo Tuan, or simply Tuan or Tuan, is usually equated with Allah. Other objects of reverence are spirits known as Umbo. Ancestor. Also variously spelled Umbo, M. Bo, M. B. O etc. Traditionally, the Umbo referred more specifically to ancestral spirits, different from the Saitan nature spirits, and the Jin familiar spirits. Some literature refers to all of them as Umbo. These include Umbo Bailiu, the spirits of wind and storms, and Umbo Pei or Umbo Gandum, the spirits of the first rice harvest. They include totemic spirits of animals and plants, including Umbo Summit totem of ants, and Umbo Kamen totem of mantis shrimp. The construction and launch of sailing vessels are ritualized, and the vessels are believed to have a spirit known as Sumanga, guardian, literally, one who deflects attacks. The Umbo are believed to influence fishing activities, rewarding the Sama Baju by granting good luck favors known as Padaliang and occasionally punishing by causing serious incidents called Busong. Traditional Sama Baju communities may have shamans, Dukan, traditionally known as the Kalamat. The Kalamat are known in Muslim Sama Baju as the Wali Jin, literally, custodian of jinn, and may adhere to taboos concerning the treatment of the sea and other cultural aspects. 
The Kalamat preside over Sama Baju community events along with mediums known as Igal Jin. The Kalamat and the Igal Jin are said to be spirit bearers and are believed to be hosts of familiar spirits. It is not, however, regarded as a spirit possession, since the Igal Jin never lose control of their bodies. Instead, the Igal Jin are believed to have acquired their familiar spirit, Jin, after surviving a serious or near fatal illness. For the rest of their lives, the Igal Jin are believed to share their bodies with the particular Jin who saved them. One important religious event among the Sama Baju is the annual feast known as Pag Umbo or Magpay Baha, an offering of thanks to Umbo Tuan. In this ceremony, newly harvested rice P-A-A-Y Baha are dehusked Magtaparahu, while Islamic prayers D-U-A-A are recited. They are dried Magpadanak and are then laid out in small conical piles symbolic of mountains bud on the living room floor, a process known as the sleeping of rice. After two or three nights, two-thirds are set aside for making sweet rice meals panulong, while one-third is set aside for making sweet rice cakes dural. Additional prayers, zakir, which includes calling the names of ancestors out loud, are offered to the umbo after the rice meals have been prepared. Pag umbo is a solemn and formal affair. Another annual religious ceremony among the boat dwelling Sama Dailat is the Pagkanduli, literally, festive gathering. It involves ritual dancing to umbo tuan, Diang Diang Mangalai, and ancestral ghosts called Bansa. The ritual is first celebrated under a sacred dankan tree, strangler figs, known elsewhere in the Philippines as balet, symbolizing the male spirit Umbo Tuan and afterwards in the center of a grove of kamtuling trees, pandan trees, symbolizing the female spirit Diang Diang Mangalai. The trance dancing is called Mag Igal and involves female and male and Igal Jin, called the Jin Denda and Jin Lela respectively. The Jin Denda perform the first dance known as Igal Limbayan under the Dankan tree, with the eldest leading. They are performed with intricate movements of the hands, usually with metal fingernail extensions called sulinkengkeng. If the dance and music are pleasing, the Bansa are believed to take possession of the dancers, whereupon the Wali Jin will assist in releasing them at the end of the dance. The Bansa are not feared as they are regarded as spirits of ancestors. Temporarily serving as hosts for the Bansa while dancing to music is regarded as a gift by the living Sama Dailat to their ancestors. After the Igal Limbayan, the Wali Jin will invite the audience to participate, to celebrate, and to give their thanks. The last dance is the Igal Leling, with four Jin Lela performing a warrior dance, whereupon the participants will proceed to the Kamtuling Grove. There they will perform rituals and dance, this time with male and female dancers together, symbolically inviting Diang Diang Mangalai to come with them back to the Dankan tree. Further games and celebrations are held under the original Dankan tree before the celebrants say their farewells to the spirits. Unlike Pag Umbo, Pagkanduli is a joyous celebration, involving singing, dancing, and joking among all participants. It is the largest festive event among the Sama Dailat communities. Aside from Pagkanduli and Magpay Baha, public dances called Magical Jin may occur. During these celebrations, the Igal Jin may be consulted for a public seance and for nightly trance dancing. In times of epidemics, the Igal Jin are called upon to remove illness causing spirits from the community. They do this by setting a spirit boat adrift in the open sea beyond the village or anchorage. Boat dwelling A few Sama Baju still live traditionally. They live in houseboats lepa, which generally accommodate a single nuclear family, usually five people. The houseboats travel together in flotillas with houseboats of immediate relatives a family alliance, and cooperate during fishing expeditions and in ceremonies. A married couple may choose to sail with the relatives of the husband or the wife. They anchor at common mooring points called sambuangan, with other flotillas, usually also belonging to extended relatives, at certain times of the year. These mooring points are usually presided over by an elder or headsman. The mooring points are close to sources of water or culturally significant locations like island cemeteries. There are periodic gatherings of Sama Baju clans usually for various ceremonies like weddings or festivals. They generally do not sail more than 40 kilometers (24.85 miles) from their home moorage. They periodically trade goods with the land-based communities of other Sama Baju and other ethnic groups. 
Sama Baju groups may routinely cross the borders of the Philippines, Malaysia, and Indonesia for fishing, trading, or visiting relatives. Sama Baju women also use a traditional sun protecting powder called burik or boric, made from water weeds, rice, and spices. Free diving adaptations Sama Baju are noted for their exceptional abilities in free diving. Divers work long days with the greatest daily apnea diving time reported in humans of greater than five hours per day submerged. Some Baju intentionally rupture their eardrums at an early age to facilitate diving and hunting at sea. Many older Sama Baju are therefore hard of hearing. More than a thousand years of subsistence freediving associated with their life on the sea appear to have endowed the Baju with several genetic adaptations to facilitate their lifestyle. A 2018 study showed that Baju spleens are about 50% larger than those of a neighboring land based group, the Saluan, letting them store more hemoglobin rich blood, which is expelled into the bloodstream when the spleen contracts at depth, allowing breath holding dives of longer duration. This difference is apparently related to a variant of the PDE10A gene. Other genes that appear to have been under selection in the Baju include BDKRB2, which is related to peripheral vasoconstriction, involved in the diving response, FAM178B, a regulator of carbonic anhydrase, which is related to maintaining blood pH when carbon dioxide accumulates, and another one involved in the response to hypoxia. These adaptions most likely result from an increased frequency of alleles widely distributed in human populations. Members of another sea gypsy group, the Mokan, have been found to have better underwater vision than Europeans, although it is not known if this trait has a genetic basis. Music, dance, and arts Sama Baju traditional songs are handed down orally through generations. The songs are usually sung during marriage celebrations accompanied by dance and musical instruments like pulau, flute, gabong, xylophone, tagingo, kulintangongs, biula violin, and in modern times, electronic keyboards. There are several types of Sama Baju traditional songs, they include, Isun Isun, Runsai, Najat, Sai Air, Nasid, Bua Bua Anak, and Tingayan. Among the more specific examples of Sama Baju songs are three love songs collectively referred to as Singbayan. These are Daling Daling, Duldang Duldang, and Pakiring Pakiring. The most well known of these three is Pakiring Pakiring, literally, moving the hips which is more familiar to the Taosug in its commercialized and modernized form Diang Diang. The Taosug claim that the song is native to their culture, and whether the song is originally Taosug or Sama Baju remain controversial. Most Sama Baju folk songs are becoming extinct, largely due to the waning interest of the younger generations. Sama Baju people are also well known for weaving and needlework skills. Horse culture the more settled land-based West Coast Baju are expert equestrians, which makes them remarkable in Malaysia, where horse riding has never been widespread anywhere else. The traditional costume of Sama Baju horsemen consists of a black or white long-sleeved shirt Badu Sampit, with gold buttons Batawi, on the front and decorated with silver floral designs Intiras, black or white trousers Seluar Sampit, with gold lace trimmings, and a headpiece potting. They carry a spear, bujak, a riding crop, passet, and a silver-hilted karis dagger. The horse is also comparisoned with a colorful outfit called cane kuda that also have brass bells, seriao, attached. The saddle, sila sila, is made from water buffalo hide, and padded with cloth, lapik, underneath. Society Though some Sama Baju headsmen have been given honorific titles like Datu. Maharaja, or Panglima, by governments like under the Sultanate of Brunei, they usually only had little authority over the Sama Baju community. Sama Baju society is traditionally highly individualistic, and the largest political unit is the clan cluster around mooring points, rarely more. Unlike most neighboring peoples, Sama Baju society is also more or less egalitarian, and they did not practice a caste system. The individualism is probably due to the generally fragile nature of their relationships with land-based peoples for access to essentials like wood or water. When the relationship sours or if there is too much pressure from land-based rulers, the Sama Baju prefer to simply move on elsewhere. 
Greater importance is placed on kinship and reciprocal labor rather than formal authority for maintaining social cohesion. There are a few exceptions, however, like the Jama Mapun and the Sama Pangataran of the Philippines, who follow the traditional pre-Hispanic Philippine feudal society with a caste system consisting of nobles, notables, and commoners and serfs. Likely introduced by the Sultanate of Sulu. Depictions in popular culture It has been suggested by some researchers that Sama Baju people S. Visits to Arnhem Land gave rise to the accounts of the mysterious Beijini people in the myths of Australia. S. Yolnu Aboriginals, the Sama Baju have also been the subject of several films. They include Bajau, 1957, a Filipino film directed by Lomberto V. Avalon. Baju Laut, Nomads of the Sea, 2008, a Singaporean TV documentary produced by Matthew Malpelli. The Mirror Never Lies, 2011, Indonesian film directed by Camila Andini Thy Womb, 2012, a Filipino drama film directed by Brillante Mendoza Bohe, Sons of the Waves, 2013, a Filipino short film produced by Najwa and Linda Banzel Anak ng Bajau, 1987, a Filipino film directed by Jose Antonio Alonso and Jerry O. Taronazona. Notable Sama Baju Politics Matt Sala, Datu Muhammad Sala, Saba warrior from Ananam, Kota Kinabalu during the British administration of North Borneo. Tun Datu Mustafa, Tun Datu Mustafa bin Datu Haran, the first Yang di Pertua Negri, governor, of Saba and the third chief minister of Saba from Kudat. Tun Said Keruak, the seventh governor of Sabah and the fourth chief minister of Sabah from Kota Belad. Tun Sakharin Dandai, the eighth governor of Sabah and also the eighth chief minister of Sabah from Semporna. Ahmad Shah Abdullah, the ninth governor of Sabah from Ananam, Kota Kinabalu. Salah Said Keruak, Datuk Seri Panglima Mode Salah bin Tun Mode Said Keruak, the ninth chief minister of Sabah from Kota Belad and a former federal minister with the rank of senator in the Dewan Negara. Osu Sukum, Datuk Seri Panglima Osu bin Sukum, the twelfth chief minister of Sabah from Papar. Mode Nasir Tun Sakharin, Dato, Mode Nasir bin Tun Sakharin Dandai, Sabah politician from Semporna. Musa Aman, the 14th Chief Minister of Sabah from Beaufort. Shafi Abdul, Dato, Sari H. J. Mode Shafi bin Abdul, the 15th Chief Minister of Sabah from Semporna. Pandakar Amin Mulia, Speaker of the Dewan Rakyat, former Member of Parliament of Malaysia from Kota Belat. Askalani Abdul Rahim, Datuk Askalani bin Abdul Rahim, former Minister of Culture, Youth and Sports from Semporna. Abdul Rahman Dalin, former cabinet minister from Kota Belad as well the former member of parliament in the Dewan Rakyat. Isnaresa Munira Majlis, member of parliament of Kota Belad in the Dewan Rakyat. Entertainment Adam AF2, Izam Mat Saman, Malaysian singer and actor, great nephew of Tun Ahmad Shah Abdullah, his grandmother is the elder sister of the latter. City Filipino singer Yanni, Mentor, the late city Syrian Julkarim, Malaysian singer in the popular TV shows of Mentor on TV3 from Lycus, Kota Kinabalu. Wawa Zainal Abidin, Malaysian actress. Aswin Combos, Malaysian actor. Rita Gaviola Sama Baju Beggar, Rita Gaviola, Filipino actress in the Pinoy Big Brother Season 7. Sports Bana Ceylani, a Filipino Olympic swimmer who represented the Philippines in the 1956 Summer Olympics, the 1958 Asian Games, where he won five bronze medals, and one silver, and the 1960 Summer Olympics. He was more popularly known as Bapa Banana. 
Estino Taniyu, a Malaysian swimmer from the Royal Malaysian Navy who swam across the English Channel in 13 hours, 45 minutes, and 45 seconds on 21 September 2012. Matlan Maryan, former Malaysian football player and the former Sabah FA captain. See also Lumad Gaia Island Orang Laut Sama Baja languages Notes References Further reading Newspapers Journey in Borneo with Bajaus by Rihan Bajaus Children at the Daily Mail More information on the Bajaus at the BBC The Last of the Sea Nomads at the Guardian The Sea Gypsies of Sulu at the Collegiate Times Books Francois Robert Zackett, 2009 Pupil Nomade de la Mer, Les Bajos d'Indonésie. Editions Pocket, Collection Terra Humaine, Paris.